Hi, I'm Dr. Janice McQueen, and it's my pleasure today to introduce you to Dolores M. Samuel. She will be our speaker today. And Dolores is an English major who would like to be an English, high school English teacher when she graduates. Her dream is to one day have one of her stories published. Her favorite subject is, of course, English, and she enjoys most of all writing. Education has empowered Miss Samuels. She is the first person in her family to graduate from high school, and she also hopes to be the first person to graduate from college. She has had to overcome lots of struggles to get to where she is today. She thinks it's important to empower women, and she would like to pass on some empowerment to women by sharing her story and also by giving them hope that they can do whatever they want to do. Please welcome Ms. Samuels. I want to start off by saying that this is very nerve-wracking for me. <laughs> Since I don't do well with large crowds, so this isn't that large, but <laughs> um, this is my second year here at FMU. Um, I am an English major. Um, I know as women we face a lot of problems, but today I chose to talk about only a few out of a billion. I have always struggled with self-esteem. And I know I am not alone. My mother and I have a very complicated relationship and that I love her so much, but she is the reason for a lot of my pain. Growing up, my mother never complimented me, but rather the opposite. When I was younger, I hated being dark skinned because my mom would make me feel so ugly for having this wretched dark skin that I didn't even ask for. She would call me things like Gorilla, Monkey, and Blackie. Once while watching TV, she just came out and said, Dolores, you are ugly. I spent maybe 30 minutes in the bathroom crying my eyes out. It was and still is so hard to feel good about myself when I was constantly made to feel hideous. In our society, so much importance is placed on looks and looking a certain way. We all are supposed to look like Barbies, but that is not reality. We all come in different shapes and sizes, and we come in different shades of color, but we all are beautiful in our own way. Everyone has flaws, and we have to learn how to embrace them. But this journey is not an easy one. With the media, friends, family, boyfriends, in your own mind, telling you that you are not beautiful or that, or that there is something wrong with you, you are constantly reminded of why you are wrong. Low self-esteem is something I still struggle with. It's taken a lot of tears, counseling, praying, and supporting friends to finally be able to accept that there is nothing wrong with being dark-skinned. We are beautiful ladies, inside and out. But some of us have heard all our lives how we are not. And those of us that fall in the ladder, we need a lot of guidance and support. Many women struggle with their image. With so, mu with, with so much pressure to look a certain way, it can take a toll on one to feel like she is beautiful. Personally, I have always been comfortable with my body until recently. I have put on weight and in Hollywood, I would be considered a well. The comments I read about the celebrities are crazy. A lot of young kids and young adults look up to these celebrities. And if a person who is a size three is being called fat, then that can have a negative effect on what they think of their own body. The media makes it seem like you can only be beautiful if you are a size zero. Does anyone know the pop R&B singer be who the pop R&B singer Beyonce is? Can you believe someone called her gross and fat? Yes, that is how crazy our society has become with the, exception, with the obsession of being super thin. They never focus on how people are built differently and how some people just can't be a size zero and still be healthy. 
I do think we should all try to be healthy, but a pant size does not determine that. I know people who are super skinny and don't have healthy eating habits. If possible, go to your doctor or, or a nutrition, nutritionist to find out what type of diet and exercise plan works for you. And for all my bigger girls, it's okay to have curves. Curves are beautiful. And to my skinny women, it's okay to not have the curves. You are still beautiful. I just want us all to embrace our bodies and feel beautiful. Another issue that many women face today is sexual abuse. I found some interesting statistics on a PD Coalition's website. Every two minutes, somewhere in America, someone is sexually assaulted. One in six women are victims of sexual assault and one in 33 men. 17.7 million American women have been victims of attempted or completed rape. 51.6% of offender relationships to victims of rape were friends or someone they knew. 25.2% of rape victims fall into the age range of 18 and 24. I am one of those victims. And if anyone ever needs someone to talk to, I am here for you. I want to encourage women and men to speak out. If they have been victims, of this senseless crime. I told a family friend and she handled it from there. Tell a trusted family member, counselor, pastor, and or law enforcement. Don't be ashamed. You have nothing to be ashamed of. It was not your fault. As I know many people fall into that trap of believing. Remember, no one ever deserves to be raped or assaulted. If you ever find yourself in this situation, there are four preventive measures to help avoid that risky situation from escalating. First, communicate your limits clearly. I can't stress this enough. If someone starts to offend you or cross a line that makes you uncomfortable, tell them firmly and early. If the person does not respect your wishes, remove yourself from the situation immediately. Do not give someone the chance to violate your wishes your wishes or boundaries. Secondly, be assertive. Being passive can be interpreted as a yes. It is not. Be direct and firm with someone who is sexually pressuring you. Tell the person what you want or don't want and stick with your decision. Third, trust your instincts. Again, I stress the importance of this. If you feel you are being pressured to unwanted sex, you probably are. If you feel uncomfortable or threatened around someone, get out of the situation immediately. If you misread someone's signals, you can always provide an explanation later. Fourth, you can be physical, but I strongly suggest to be very careful with this one. You don't want to anger the person, especially if they have a weapon. And to, every, and to everyone here today, you are loved, you are treasured, and you are worthy. Don't be ashamed. There is help out there, counseling, hotlines, friends, and family, and the law if you feel troubled or abused. College comes with so much stress. It's a time where many of us are leaving our families and childhood friends. We are finding who we are we are making the tough decisions of what we want to do for the rest of our life, and we are striving for academic success. We all are coming from different walks of life, different struggles, and different political and religious views. Now is your opportunity as women and men to shine. Let's give another round of applause for Ms. Samuels. She did a wonderful job um, in observing who Ms. Samuels um, is as a student here at FMU, um, she really is a quiet individual. So for her to stand before us today and um, share her story, her struggles, and um, also encouragement to uh, women, um, not only women, but men, um, says a lot um, of growth 
and maturity in Ms. Samuels. So Ms. Samuels, we applaud you um, in, in, in sharing your story today. And on behalf of the Multicultural Advisory Board, if you could come back up to the stage. We want to present um, a small token, um, token of our appreciation for um, sharing your story uh, with us today on behalf of uh, Women's History Empowerment Month uh, for the month of March. So. <laughs> and uh, in closing, um, as uh, Ms. Carter um, previously stated, I'm sorry, Ms. Carter McCants. <laughs> Um, stated earlier, um, there are evaluations in the back, so um, if you could fill out those evaluations for us, uh, we would greatly appreciate your um, comments um, and your suggestions. Um, this is our last program for the semester, so I look forward to um, upcoming programs for the fall 2011 semester. So thank you all for coming. Thank you.